Hello and welcome to Wealthy Women's Wednesday. I hope this is streaming okay. I am on the big island of Hawaii, as you can tell, and this is the ultimate, ultimate place to be making a Wealthy Women's Wednesday training because I am surrounded by the most gorgeous, luscious beauty, and I'm heading in to lead my client retreat here on the Big Island. This has been a dream of mine for years, since 2003. Um, I had my honeymoon on this island, and that was the first time shortly after that that I got a chance to experience the island's magic and swim with dolphins. I flew over here a couple days ago, and the very first thing that I did within just a few hours of landing uh, was I had a chance to get in the water with wild spinner dolphins, and that is really what prompted this week's theme and this week's training that I want to be sure to get you, which is all about finding entrepreneurial flow. Finding that flow state that many of us are searching for. Finding that place where we can actually enjoy the work. I have so many clients say to me, it's like their number one complaint, Sage, I don't want to push so hard. I don't always want to be feeling like I'm, you know, up against this big wall of pain and difficult fear and lack of comfort, right? Well, the truth is you don't have to. You don't have to feel like the whole thing is painful. So I want to orient you today to the four stages of flow on behalf of Wealthy Women's Wednesdays. And I want to invite you as I'm talking about the four states to really tune into which one is the least comfortable for you. Because when you can identify where you need to skill up, so that we can all spend more time in this like flow ecstatic place like the place where you know the place that I felt when I was swimming with dolphins yesterday when we can all spend more time there in the flow in the magic and wonder of life right then our lives can feel like Hawaii they can feel like swimming with dolphins they can feel like eating chocolate they can feel like having sex they can feel like all the things that we want our lives and our businesses to feel that way and I'm here to tell you that your business can feel that good but it's not always going to. You know, and the Dalai Lama talks about what do we do when the inspiration runs out? Because no matter what our purpose is, no matter what project we're working on, the inspiration is going to run out. And that's where the work really begins. That's where our connection to flow into the universe and to the divine is essential so that we can get back to a place of being resourced now. I invite you to let us know below, what do you feel is your biggest block to flow? In the comments section, please post, say hi. I wanna congratulate you. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to be coming to you live from the Big Island. And I invite you to post, what is your biggest block to being in flow? What is your biggest block What is the biggest thing that gets in the way of you just being like ecstatically surrendered into your business all the time? So, like I said, the first time I swam with dolphins was right after my honeymoon. And one of the things about my honeymoon in 2003 was that my husband at the time, my fiance at the time, offered to plan our month long honeymoon on the big island of Hawaii. Um, And It was like a dream come true for me because I always wanted a man that would just like come in and be the hero and scoop me up. And what happened was I got really excited for about a week and then the excitement wore off. And he had ideas of, you know, booking us uh, at campgrounds and (laughs) um, he had ideas of everything that he wanted to do and they didn't totally include everything that I wanted to do um, on my honeymoon. And I started to get really scared and For the first time in my life, I think a light shined so clearly on how much of a control freak I am (laughs) because I ended up getting a big argument at the, you know, with my fiance at the time about our honeymoon. And then I, I caught myself thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to spend a month on the big island and on Kauai and on Maui. And, 
Um, no matter what we do, it's going to be amazing. So why am I holding on so tightly to this? And over the months and over the years, I've continued to unpack this because I do really feel that this feeling of like we need to control everything in our businesses, we need to control everything about the action steps that we take. I feel like this is a big part of why we suffer in business. And I want to make a distinction between struggle and suffering because I want to introduce the idea that we could actually struggle, right? Like when you feel that need to wrestle with somebody or, you know, like take a good run or go do a good hot yoga practice, like that desire that we have to to sort of push up against something in our world, that doesn't have to be painful, right? It's the suffering that causes the pain. So as I've unpacked this need that I have to control everything in my world, one of the things I've gotten really good at is not just judging myself when I'm not having fun or getting contracted when I'm working really hard, but catching myself in the middle of the the push, in the middle of the work, and actually staying connected to my heart. And as we learn to do this more and more, we can get back to what I've come to understand as the four stages of flow. Now, the being face to face with my inner control freak didn't stop when I realized that I was trying to over control my honeymoon. Uh, My big breakthrough moment came a couple years later when I actually was offered a job here on the big island because what happens when we come to an island like Hawaii? Well, if you're like me, and this is something that happens I think when we get exposed to a lot of really good stuff. In fact, this desire thing that we do helps us to find our way into the most magical expression of our business ever because I got to the big island and I said to myself, people live here, I could live here. So I applied for a job here and I got a job here and it was meant to be a job opening up a charter school for high schoolers and it was gonna be great pay for a teacher. At the time I was a teacher, many of you know I was a teacher. And it was like my dream come true and I was like convincing my husband at the time we have to do this, we're gonna move to the big island and everything about our lives is gonna be rainbows and butterflies forever, right? So they flew me over here to interview for the job and they sat me down and I sat in this little conference room on this beautiful island for like three hours waiting for them to come in and give me the interview. And when they finally did, they announced to me that the charter school had not been properly funded And so it wasn't going to be open for two to three more years. But in the meantime, they found me an amazing job teaching first grade reading, which is not what I was passionate about. And it was half the pay. This had been a lifelong dream and I had convinced my husband that this move to Hawaii was gonna solve all our problems. So basically with my tail between my legs, I went back to my husband and I started the process of unpacking the place where my need to control everything in my life meets like reality and the thing that the universe does for us which is most of the heavy lifting of us manifesting and womanifesting our dream business i remember having a big cry and instead of what i wanted to do which was argue with my husband again I asked him to take me to the beach and I got out of the car, the rental car, and I just still remember tears are just streaming down my face and I'm walking into the ocean just sobbing at the loss of the perceived dream of of teaching on the big island and having to say no to that job opportunity. And now years later, I get to spend as much time on the island as I want and I get to do it on my terms, making the kind of money I want and giving back really I think more importantly giving the gift that I'm really here to give and um, even after my marriage ended my ex-husband and I have stayed close as friends and we still laugh about how much I tried to muscle that dream into reality and how grateful I am that that door closed Garth Brooks has a song called unanswered prayers you know what I'm talking about such a good song some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers So that brings me to the four stages of flow, which I really dove into um, in a study that I did through a practice called orgasmic meditation. Yes, you didn't hear me incorrectly. 
orgasmic meditation. After I left my marriage, I knew that I had healing to do around my own sexual journey. Like many of you, I've been sexually abused and I knew that I had more work to do around coming back into like the own flow of pleasure, my own flow of pleasure in my body. So I studied with a woman named Nicole Dedone. Nicole Dedone is the incredible facilitator of a technique called orgasmic meditation. And she studied how the brain is affected by orgasm and, and, and what are the different states of the brain and what are the different physiological states of this thing called orgasm. So I was reflecting on this because I swam with dolphins yesterday and when we when you swim with dolphins it's like having sex with the ocean like that's the best thing I can liken it to and I was thinking about the four stages of flow and how they apply to business so let me tell you a little bit about what Nicole has discovered are the actual four stages of flow write these down and ask yourself which one do I know I could stand to skill up in right the first stage of flow Many of you are going to be surprised by this. The first stage of flow is actually struggle. How is that possible? What does struggle have to do with flow? Think about it. How does the caterpillar get out of the chrysalis to become the butterfly? We have to have something to push against. For most of us, it's us pushing against our fear, our limiting beliefs. As we grow into a more spacious, expression of ourselves this the, the first stage of flow is struggle the second stage of flow is release ultimately in order for the caterpillar to get out of the chrysalis it ultimately has to push up against the chrysalis enough that there's all these little cracks in the chrysalis and then the caterpillar has to release its wings and trust that it can fly. Step one, struggle. Step two, release. Step three is actually the flow state that we're all going for. The blissful, ecstatic, swimming, dancing, teaching, channeling, loving, orgasming, right? Flow. And there's actually a fourth stage. Do you know what it is? The fourth stage is recover. Because when we're actually ecstatically flowing, it requires our chi, it requires our energy. We have to give ourselves time to come down, replenish, recover, and fill back up. So let's unpack this a little bit, right? Because most of us get into the place where we feel the struggle and we do several things in the face of that struggle. We collapse, we contract, we make up stories that, you know, I don't want to do it this way. There, there must be something wrong if it doesn't feel easeful and joyful. This feels very hard. I'm overwhelmed, right? All of the stories that run. Can somebody just do this for me? Can't it be easier? Right? So rather than struggling against the struggle, I invite us all to see the challenge that's in front of us, the opportunity that's in front of us, the obstacle in front of us as a worthy obstacle. To see it as a worthy obstacle. By the way, when I went swimming with dolphins yesterday, it was like a full circle moment, right? The first time I swam with dolphins, it was right after my honeymoon and I remember they told me I was going to write a book someday. So when I got a chance to swim with them yesterday, it was almost like I was celebrating the fact that the book has been birthed. I told them all about it and they already knew. And it wasn't actually an easy experience because I was supposed to have a friend with me who couldn't make it at the last minute and I was supposed to be on a boat and the boat reservation didn't go through at the last minute. So I ended up finding the dolphins and entering the ocean after an hour and a half long drive through the dark at 6.30 in the morning here, because that's what time they swim. In order for me to have the experience, I had to face my fear of getting in the crashing waves by myself and being brave in the dark and trusting that 
I'm a really solid swimmer. And it was in that willingness to sort of push up against my fears that the ocean is scary that I released into yet another flow experience of surrendering to the dolphins. And I'm curious for you, when you encounter those struggles, how do you relate to the struggle? How, like, where do you go when you're faced with the scary thing that's, the scary opportunity that's being placed in front of you? Whether it's getting in the ocean or getting on stage or launching your website or sending out your first group email. Where do you go in the face of that? And how do we support you with internal resources and external resources? This community, Wealthy Women Wednesday community, the Women Rocking Business Sisterhood, is here to have your back. So that instead of going to that place of, I can't do it, I'm not worthy, what if it doesn't work out? We can relate to the obstacle with excitement, with what my friend Heather Ash, who's a firewalk instructor, says, this is a worthy obstacle. Because I'm telling you, sister, I mean, if you didn't have worthy obstacles in your path, I'm guessing life might feel a little boring to you, right? So, as you look into my eyes, think about the next obstacle, the next opportunity in your path to launch your website, to book your next talk, to find your next referral partner, to launch your Facebook page. And look it in the eyes and tell it, you are a worthy obstacle. And I'm willing to nuzzle up against, with some force if necessary, that which it's going to take for me to expand into being the woman who walks through this. And when it feels like a struggle, sister, remember the saying, when you're going through hell, don't stop and build a condominium, (laughs) right? When you're going through hell, keep going. When you're going through hell, keep going. So in relation to, to the struggle, we take care of ourselves through it. We reach out and get support. We get on Facebook and let everybody, like we let not just anybody, but we let a like-minded tribe of sisters know like, hey, I'm up against this. Can someone just remind me that I can do this? That I also am worthy. We learn to make peace with the struggle. The struggle doesn't have to be painful. Then we release. We release into the knowingness that it's not all ours to do, right? If you want 10 new clients, that's actually not yours to do. Yours to do is the steps it takes to get the clients. It's the universe's job to send you the 10 people. So you put yourself out there. You do the marketing. You do the talk. You do the Facebook Live videos. And if it's not working, you do the work of reaching out to somebody who can help you who can help you adjust it. That's where mentors come into place, right? And that's where the release comes into place because now we can enjoy the signature talks. We can enjoy booking the speaking engagements. We can enjoy the marketing because we know ours to do is to show up, to do the, to do the steps. It's the universe's job to provide the results. We don't have to control that. Struggle, release, and where do we get to release? We get to release into flow. Struggle, release, and then flow. Flow into the results. Flow into the blissful action of building our businesses. And don't forget about the fourth step. The fourth step is recover. I had to learn how to recover. I was horrible at it. I had to learn how to take myself home and put on my hoodie and get in a saltwater bath and rest. I was horrible at that step. Which of the four steps do you know is the least comfortable for you? And I'm sure there are probably more than one. There's probably more than one step that you can stand to get a little bit better at. I had to get better at release and recover. I didn't mind the struggle. I I found myself in it, right? And I loved the flow. I'm a glutton for flow. But I had to learn how to recover. And a little bit better, I had to get a little better at release trusting the plan, 
following through, releasing into support that's here for me. I was really bad at asking for support. What about you? What is it for you? Thank you for posting. I see a bunch of you posting. And there's a lot of you who could do better at recovery and there's quite a few of you, it looks like, yeah, who could do better with releasing as well. And some of you, it sounds like, can do better with the struggle, like just relating to the struggle in a more healthy way, right? I'm up for this challenge, boom. And the thing about release too, you guys, is release is also about emotional release because it's gonna require like more energy running through your system to have bigger results that you've never had before. And so just don't make yourself wrong if you need to have bigger cries and, you know, bigger temper tantrums in the appropriate locations, (laughs) right? And if you need to give yourself bigger rewards, like coming to the Big Island to lead a retreat and I'm about ready to go be with my clients. And I can't believe, I cannot believe that over 30 women, high level women. These are women with businesses and clients. This is my high level mastermind called Leverage. 30 leverage women are flying to the Big Island. They already have and we are about to start our retreat. This is like a dream come true for me. I hope you join us some year. It's the Big Island branding retreat, business breakthrough retreat. So goddess powerhouse, let's use this community, let's use this tribe. Now that you've identified which stage of flow you're less comfortable with, let's hold each other accountable. So just go through and give each other some love and click like and um, say hi to a few people. And let's continue to grow a community that supports not just I want to feel good and amazing and rainbows and butterflies all the time in business, but a community that supports the authentic expression that needs to flow through us so that we can continue to return to a powerful, woman-manifesting flow state in our businesses, in our lives, get our messages out there, help the people we're meant to help, make the difference we're meant to make, lead retreats in beautiful places, enroll high-level clients, and start right where we are without making ourselves wrong, one step at a time, you are exactly in the place you're meant to be to make the difference you are here to make. So thank you and congratulations for being here for Wealthy Women's Wednesdays. I'll make you another quick little video from the retreat live so you can say hi to all my clients. We love you, we bless you. Post a comment below. Let us know what you're committed to next now that you understand the flow state, the four stages of flow, and that it's not all about orgasming, orgasming and climaxing all the time, right? In order to have that, just like Nicole Dedone says, and you can look her up, she has a TED Talk that has millions of years. Um, in order to have that orgasmic state that we're all looking for, the orgasmic state that I experienced when I was swimming with dolphins, in order to have that, we have to be willing to go through the other stages. I love you. I bless you. May this practice of flow continue to support you on your entrepreneurial unfolding. And I will see you next week for Wealthy Women Wednesday Facebook Live. Goddess bless you. Love from the Big Island. Keep rocking it. Your clients are waiting for you. They're not just waiting for someone like you. They're actually waiting for you. Aloha. Mahalo.